Enzymes. Hey, Professor. Just the other day, I saw this small man swallow an entire steak bigger than the size of his head. And it got me to thinking, how could he possibly digest all that in just a few hours? Well, the steak is first chewed in the mouth into bits and pieces that fall into the stomach. You might already know that the stomach contains a powerful acid that can dissolve even metals. But, what you did not know is that this acid is not what ultimately breaks down the steak. No, it's very tiny and special molecules called enzymes that do the job. Strangely, these enzymes find the stomach acid a cozy place to work in. Whoa! It's like small piranhas finishing up a whale in a sea of acid. Imagine what I could do with that. Ooh. Huh? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> well, it doesn't work that way. What do you mean it doesn't work that way? I knew you were going to say that. To find out, you need to know what exactly enzymes are and how they work. Whenever you're ready, click Next to continue. What are enzymes? They are proteins that speed up chemical reactions. Without them, reactions can still occur, but they would be too slow to support life. There are many different types of enzymes, and they come in all manner of shapes and sizes. For example, what you call the piranha enzyme is actually pepsin. It is only found in the stomach and digests proteins. In your mouth, there is amylase, which breaks down starch. In your cells alone are hundreds of enzymes that control your cell activity and defend them from invasions by microbes like bacteria and viruses. Though enzymes can appear very different, they all share a few characteristics in common. Let's now take a look at what these are. Number one, each enzyme has an active site. This is the groove in the enzyme where the molecules they act on, called substrates, are captured and made to undergo a reaction. The substrates are either broken apart or combined together to form products. For instance, starch found in the bread that you eat is digested to form simple sugars called glucose that is then absorbed into the body. Glucose is used up as energy, but when there's too much of it, Special enzymes combine the glucose molecules together to form a giant molecule called glycogen, which is then stored away in the liver and muscles for later use. Number two, enzymes are very specific. Each enzyme can only bind to one type of substrate. Let's look at the case of lipase enzyme, which breaks down fats. Molecules like glucose and proteins cannot fit into the active site of lipase. Only fat cells can bind to the active site because they have the right shape. This ability to act on just fat cells is very important for lipase. Lipase converts fats into energy. Now imagine what would happen if lipase can also convert proteins into neurochemicals for the brain to function well. If you no longer need the extra energy from your storage of fats, lipase will be deactivated. But this means that lipase can no longer produce precious neurochemicals for your brain. In other words, when you stop burning fats, you end up damaging your brain. To prevent such freakish scenarios from happening in our body, enzymes must only act on one type of molecule. Number three, enzymes are recycled. Enzymes are not altered by the reactions they speed up. Immediately after they finish one reaction, they can act on a new substrate. This way, only a small amount of enzyme is needed to speed up thousands of reactions.